Hi and welcome to Unit 2, Topic 3, Video 6, where we're going to look at how we can discuss shape, location and spread of data. So I've got four numerical graphs to talk about. They're all histograms, that's how we know that they're numerical, and their bars touch, so we're happy with that. They're not perfectly drawn. I've got arrows in the end, I don't have a vertical axis for any of them, so it could be a percentage frequency or a frequency or even maybe a probability graph. We're not too worried about that for now. I just want to have a look and I want to talk to you about some of the language behind discussing shape, location and spread for these types of graphs. So, let's have a quick look. First of all, in terms of shape, these two graphs here, and let's look particularly at this pink one, this is called a symmetrical graph. Okay, we've got our central high point and then it's symmetrical about that. It looks pretty symmetrical. This one, not so much, but it's still symmetrical in a, in a way. And the reason why this one would be still considered symmetrical is because it's not skewed. These two are skewed. So this graph up here pushes to the high end, which actually means it's called a negatively skewed graph. Okay, the reason it's negatively skewed is because the skew is determined by the difference between the mean and the median. And we don't need to know too much about that, but in this case, this median is up here, whereas the mean's been dragged down, and the mean minus the median is negative. Down here, we have a positively skewed graph. What you need to be able to do is determine whether it's negatively or positively skewed just by visual look. So I always just remember it's opposite to what I expect. Um, but I'll leave that up to you. We have a symmetrical graph, negatively skewed graph, positively skewed graph. Next, we need to talk a bit about location. And I've deliberately not put any bars in here because I want to talk about the fact that this graph is located over here on the right hand side. Higher values, maybe the positive values, whatever it is. This one is over on the left hand side and this is centrally located. So you might have to talk about the data. Now typically if you were, weren't drawing these and you only had this graph, you probably wouldn't actually put this part on. But imagine you're comparing two graphs. You're comparing this blue one to this yellow one here then it might be important for you to recognise that this one is in the lower end and this one's in the upper end and therefore the comparison and the discussion is important. So that's location. Then we also have spread, the spread of the data. Now I'm not too worried about these two this time, I'm just going to look at these two. Okay, now let's imagine it's the same amount of data being represented. This pink graph has a smaller spread. It's more compressed, whereas this yellow graph down here is spread out more. Now they're both reasonably symmetrical, this one's not as nice, but the idea is the same. It's a little bit more spread out, a little bit more compressed, so we, have, we can talk about spread. Now remember our measures of spread were um, range, and then we also have talked about standard deviation in the previous video. So this clearly has a bigger range, and it's more spread out. It will also have a larger standard deviation. So there's some information for you on um, location, spread, and shape of graph. Well, I hope that was helpful. There's a little bit to unpack there, and you may need to use some of those descriptive terms in order to describe shape, location, or spread of data.